In my latest 100 days, we arrive on the center, which launched in 2016 and was actually the second ever map to come to Ark after the island. This is the map that I've spent the most hours on, so after beating it countless times, I wanted to do something a bit different. I wanted to see if I could beat Ark Survival Evolved without taking damage. To do this, I would set my HP to 0.1, where it would remain for the whole challenge. To make this challenge a little bit more possible, the Twitch chat and I did agree that I would start with one life, and gain one more every 25 days that I successfully survived. So essentially, I had four lives total. Let's see how I got on. Oh, and quickly, if you do enjoy the video, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel. We are trying to hit 30,000 subscribers before the end of the year, and also come on over and join the challenges live on Twitch. Enjoy the video. On day one, we spawned in on the beaches of Tropical Island South. Now, the first problem I'm assuming you're all thinking is, Rampy, how are you going to start this challenge? As most of us begin arc by punching a tree. Well, let me introduce you all to the Moss Chops, a passively tamed dino which harvests both wood and thatch from trees. I tamed a Moss Chops up and then decided to tame another one up as my army began to grow. I then decided to tame up this small monkey here before completely forgetting about him and decided to take on some of the local wildlife for my Moss Chops army which includes a tech parasol, which was a nice source of early game metal. Now, Moss Chops actually did far more damage than I ever expected, and were a great starter tame, not least for their fantastic harvesting abilities. With some basics now harvested, I set up a thatch foundation and a refining forge, before finding this level 50 terror, who was swiftly bowlered by the bowler god Rampy himself and knocked out. Just down the beach from them, I found a level 95, but once more, he got bowlered and knocked out with a few trank arrows to the head. While the 95 was still taming, the level 50 had completely finished, so I went for a little fly around before I bumped into an old friend of the channel who would scare me to bits throughout this whole challenge. Oh no! Oh! Leave me alone! Oh no! They're back! They're back with a vengeance! Oh my word. So yes, throughout this whole challenge, I don't think any creature would scare me more than the Microraptor. The Microraptor knocks you off your dino and stuns you, which would mean I would almost certainly die. Anyways, on returning to the beach, the good news was that my level 95 Terra had now tamed up. The bad news was that seconds later, our level 50 had been taken out by a wild raptor. Things were about to get more confusing as my moss chops had also done a disappearing act. Now time for a quick word from our sponsor. I'm happy to say that this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is one of the best games for iOS, Android and PC, which brings a true console level experience right into your hands. With hundreds of artifacts to equip and over 600 champions plus of unique skills, there is a mountain of stuff to do within Raid. The recently introduced Doom Tower mode brings a whole new world to explore, with terrifying bosses to slay. Sprawling over 120 levels, the Doom Tower brings exciting challenges for both new and seasoned players of Raid. If the Doom Tower isn't enough of a challenge for you, why not try your hand at taking down the Hydra Clan boss, which is without a doubt the biggest, baddest and scariest boss you can take on. By taking it down however, you will get one of the best artifacts in the game, so are you up to the challenge? I imagine most of you watching right now have seen or heard of Raid before, and perhaps some of you have even seen my Scorched Earth 100 Days video, also sponsored by them. One of the things that I do love the most about Raid is that since that video, the Raid team have continued to add more exciting content and game modes to the game. For example, right now due to the Halloween season, Raid are running an amazing trick or treat promotion where you can win a bunch of in-game items, but also real life prizes. There is really no better time to get started in Raid Shadow Legends guys, and for all of you new players, I have a special treat for you. By using my link in the description or scanning the QR code on screen, you will get a special goodie bag worth up to $30. We're talking a free epic champion, 200k silver, one energy refill, an XP boost, and one ancient shard, so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. Thank you once again to Rage Shadow Legends for being the sponsor of this video. You're getting tamed, mate. You are most certainly getting tamed. Yep, that's very nice. Back to the challenge. That night, I set off while my new Terra tamed to get some crystal, so I could make myself an awesome spyglass, one of two mods I use along with Structures Plus, both are in the description below. That night, I returned to the beach to see how my 135 Tyranodon was getting on, to witness him being eaten by a wild Rex. Rex! I am fuming! The best news was that one of my moss chops had been found in the trees, not quite sure what he was doing there, but hey ho. 
I then decided to do the rather crazy thing that only Rampy would do of taking on an Alpha Raptor with a Moss Chops. And to my surprise, the Moss Chops took it like a champ and made light work at his level 25 Alpha Raptor. Now I think it's finally time that we address the elephant in the room here. Rampy, how is this challenge even possible? You can take damage from so much in Ark, such as starving, being thirsty, or the cold or heat. That, my friends, is down to a little stat called Fortitude. It makes your character less susceptible to the weather conditions, reducing your risk of getting hot or cold, as well as making your food and water stats go down slower. This stat is what makes this challenge possible, which is why, as you can see here, most of my stat points have already gone into it, and I'm only level 60 or so. After that, I decided it was finally time to leave Tropical Island South, as this would not be where I was intending on basing myself full time. I started to explore Jungle South and came across this lovely ruins place, which was actually where I built one of my very first bases on the center back in 2016, back when I had 9,000 less hours than I do in this silly dinosaur game. Anyway, this spot was nice and secluded and up high away from any nasty mean dinosaurs, looking at you Microraptors, which would bring this challenge to an early end. Another great thing about this base spot was that right above it you could find mountains of metal and also crystal, which could never be turned down. Low 135. Right, let's watch out for the let's watch out for the truodons. Easy prime. Easy prime. So that's 37 points in health. Remember, flyers have no wasted points, so that's actually a pretty pretty poor to add on. But um it's better than what we have. After doing some farming and taming a level 145 Trinodon. It was now time to go and look for an Argentavis, which meant I would first need to make a trap, as we couldn't risk taking a single speck of damage. I made it using some wooden dinosaur gateways, and after having a few issues at first due to having to be ultra careful not to take any damage, we eventually got him trapped and knocked out. When the Argentavis had tamed up later that day, the first thing I went and did was grab myself a 130 Ankylo, which was found right near base. I had built a taming pen ready to tame him up, and stood well back while I pelted him with some arrows. He tamed up pretty quickly, and I then tamed this 140 Raptor up, yeah, I'm not really sure why I decided to tame this thing up. I'm pretty sure I just wanted to pay homage to my most successful video to date, which if you haven't watched yet, it's something to consider after this one. After knocking the raptor out, I returned with the RG to Tropical Island South, where my incredible alpha raptor slaughtering moss chops was there, loyally waiting for me. Back at base, the raptor had tamed up, and I went on a quick metal run, and a stone run with the Anki. I wanted stone as well as metal, as I wanted to put a stone behemoth gate right in front of my base. It was relatively rare that creatures spawned up here, but I could not afford to take any risks on this challenge. After placing the gate down, I was reminded that there are many ways to die when you only have 0.1 HP. Oh man. Oh mate. That's just pure pain. So my first death on this whole challenge was to a campfire, which wasn't even lit. I had clicked one too many times when placing it down, and I was now stuck with no margin for error at all, at least until day 25. I made up some fur armor and went to the snow biome to get some organic polymer. I then went to Tropical Island South, where I had to avoid some microraptors while making some cryopods, which is what I got the polymer for in the first place. I then took a terrifying adventure into the water to tame this itchy. The water was certainly a place I didn't want to be on this challenge, but as we were going to try and defeat the alpha boss on this map, I would be forced to spend some time in the depths. At base, I began to do the unthinkable for Rampy and actually made somewhat of a base. As some of you loyal viewers know, I normally live off a few foundations. This was a real special Rampy occurrence. With the base made, I set off back into the jungle to look for a Stego. I wanted a Stego for two reasons. Firstly for berries, and secondly because it would be a great dino to ride in awkward situations as you can't get knocked off these things by dinos, and you can also shoot your crossbow off them. After knocking it out, I waited through the night, high up on this rock away from the dangers below, and then cryoed him, before returning to the snow biome to get some more polymer. This time, I wanted the polymer to craft a full set of scuba, as that would give me the necessary insulation boost that only wearing the full set of scuba gives you. The Twitch viewers can confirm, taking weather damage was my biggest fear, and in one of the earlier attempts of this challenge, I had succumbed to the cold water. With my itchy secured, I was attempted to gradually get up the water food chain, so I netted a 140 Megalodon and started to knock it out. Right, Megalodon's out. Now I need some Prime. Megalodon's got. Megalodon is tamed. Next on my taming list was a Kangaroo, which was wanted for a very important reason. Come on. Knock out. He's nearly out. He's out. He's out. He's out. He's out. Okay, there was an RG right behind me. All 
Now, the reason I wanted this kangaroo was because I needed him to access the first artifact of this challenge, which without a kangaroo would have left me facing likely certain death. We had of course now passed day 25, which meant that I did have my one life back, but I was of course extremely eager not to give this life away too quickly. Okay, that's good. No, don't hit me, Onyx. No, don't hit me. Okay, we're still going. There's an alpha claw. Ooh. No, no aids. Don't give me any aids. Out of range of alpha claw spits. Okay, good. That went well. We have to go the long way up towards the. Uh, don't get mega uh, mega rabies. I will try not to. Uh. What? So despite just saying how I was eager not to lose my life early, I had died to unexpected cold. My crazy high fortitude on its own wasn't enough to keep me alive, so I had to go in search of an otter. Now otters boost your insulation stats to both heat and warm. Essentially they just regulate your body temperature. These things were huge for this whole challenge. I did find this level 90 here before I accidentally barrel rolled it instead of picking it up. But luckily I didn't have to go too much further because I found this level 95 just below which I picked up and brought back to the lake at my base where I tamed him up by murdering some fish. Hello. Let's go. What's are secured? I then threw my megalodon out in the lake just below base which I used to kill some beavers to gather their pelts to make a full set of fair armour. I was going back in search of my body and as time was ticking on the loot bag with the otter by my side I would take a different entrance into the underworld which didn't come without its issues. Ah. Ah. Right. I've done it, I've done it. Oh, I'm trying to have some water, man. Why does this cave have a bodyguard? I was just trying to have a nice hydrate. Eventually though, after navigating the Alpha Mosasaur, I did get back to my body, and with the help of my otter, I was no longer freezing. It was now time to try and secure the artifact. Now, normally to get this artifact, you would have to attempt the jumping puzzle, which while it's a fun time and a nice challenge, is not exactly ideal in a no damage challenge. With the help of my trusty Procoptodon, however, you can jump on these pillars, and another jump later, you find yourself at the artifact of the pack. The easy way. After making my own way back to the ocean cave once more, I did some brief farming before setting out to look for a Rex to tame. Oh, hang on. No, no, no. It's a normal Rex. Level 150. I would need to start my Rex Arder in order to beat the Alpha Center boss and this challenge. So I placed down a billboard trap and got to work with trapping him. Um... I've just saved this Rex, by the way. Can we all just talk about how how I just killed a wolf for him and he and he ate and he ate it and healed up to max health again? Can we just talk about how I've just saved this Rex from from, from despair? Come on, Rex, this is the one. This is the one. Right into this nicely placed bear trap. For I'm definitely that's the one. Yes. Huh? And we'll put you. No, 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 no. How's he got out? This is a scam. I swear the bear trap lasted longer than that. Absolutely scammed. Okay, I think he's stuck. I think he's stuck. Take two more shots. There we go. 12 HP. This is uh, where Awesome Spyglass helps quite a lot. You're going to kill... No, don't worry. It's all right. It's got 15 HP. Look at it. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to knock out as well. It's going to knock out as well. It's going to knock out with a massive... There we go. It's out. Right. The Rex tamed up with 39 points into melee, which I was relatively happy with. I normally would always recommend 40 plus points before starting a melee line, or HP line for that matter, 
But when venturing out of base has as many dangers as it does in this challenge, I was quite happy to go with 39. With that done, I set out to find another one, and there is no better place to find Rexes on the centre than Lava Island, where I found this 140. He's going to go down it. There we go, he's down. Right. While I tamed the Rex, this 140RG also landed right near me, so I thought I would tame him up, just in case at any point that I needed a spare Argentavis. You can do. RG, RG tamed. Back in January of this year when I first made my video. Here we go. How many points in HP have we got? Oh, that's a bit crap. So the Rex tamed up with 36 points into HP, which is uh, not what we wanted. However, when you can't take a single speck of damage, taming creatures comes with its risks. So I decided that I would keep these stats and do some mutating, of course, before we took on the boss. Next up on the list, however, was a Utyranist, which of course gives Dinos a nice boost with its Sea Courage attack. So I would certainly need one of these for the boss. The only problem is Utes are a very troublesome tame, as I couldn't risk being feared by it at all. As always with Rampy, we use the, we use the extra billboard. Um, right, that should be fine, right? He shouldn't be able to get out of there. Right, we've got to wait for him to wake up now. <sighs> After the UT had developed teleporting powers, I had to return to base to make more billboards. Only, when I returned to the UT, I found him more than happy to be tamed after all. Hang on. In the trap. Right. That was interesting. I'm not quite sure what I've just witnessed there. He's obviously decided he would like With to be tamed. With the 150 tamed. UT knocked out, I tamed him up and brought him back to base, while I continued to make my Rexes. Now, what I was doing here is breeding some 00, zero Rexes. Quickly, I'll explain that a 00, zero is a dino which has zero mutations on both sides of its ancestry line, and you always want to use these as your breeders in order to keep what we call a clean line. By clean, I mean stopping your mutations stacking on top of each other. For those unaware, once a dino gets over 20 mutations, its mutation chance drops drastically. So it's important to make use of those first 20 mutations when you have a higher chance, and to not mess up your line too early. If you would like a slightly more in-depth guide, I recommend my Raptor 100 Days video, but of course finish this one first. Anyway, as our 00 army grew, we helped ourselves to our first mutations of the challenge, with a 41 melee and 38 health rex. I did then a little bit of tribute farming, as to beat the centre on alpha, I would need to collect a lot of tributes. At base, I continued to breed the Rex and got a nice 40 health mutation. While a pain to farm, the center alpha boss is certainly one of the easier bosses on Ark, so I wouldn't need crazy Rexes in order to defeat it. Taking a break from breeding, I took a spin in the ocean, as it had just turned day 50, meaning I once more had another life in the bank. I wanted to tame a Basilo, as this would mean I couldn't get taken off my mount by a Tuso or Jellyfish, something that would certainly come in use later in this challenge. I found this 135 to tame, which was an incredibly nerve wracking experience. Thankfully, I did have my wits about me, and the Baslow did tame up. It was also pretty neat that I could place my water creatures in the lake right by my base. Thank you, Cryopods. I was now ready, with a life safely in hand, to set out in pursuit of some more artifacts. I had two in mind, which both were located on Lava Island. The main danger in both of these caves were Arthaplorers. Arthaplorers have a spit attack, which of course destroys your armour. While that is never ideal, when you have 0.1 HP, it of course does a lot more than just destroy your armour. Yeah, we can just run past them. Are there no Alpha Plorus there? I'm not seeing any. We're gonna drop. Go! Go! Okay. Right, and now we do the great play, leading everything into the lava. Bye guys. That's the alpha close. Don't hit me. Yeah. Oh, next level dodging skills. Oh no. Oh god. Okay, I'm doing good. Okay, alpha plorers. Yeah. Yeah, I see them. See those ones as well? 
I'm just hoping I don't get aimbotted. I'm not going to lie. There's so many dinos here. This is a joke. Not good. Somehow, through all the hostiles, I made it to the end of the cave and got the artifact of the massive. Next up, after making my way back to the entrance of the cave and flying out, was the Pearl Cave, which was also located on Lava Island. That aggroed on me already. Right, that snake sounds very close. Holy, that's close. See if I can... All right. Well, they look like they're having a great time. If I get hit through the mesh by them, not counting. Not counting. Right. Well, they're having a good time. Quick, quick. Get on, Roger. Go on, Roger. Roger. See you later, snakes. Bye-bye. Yeah, go on, go on. Come after me. Yeah, I'm lucky. But I thought so. Okay. Oh, Roger's made it through. What a hero. Right. What we got in here? Off. An alpha plura. No, it's a spider. Oh, good. oh that's an alpha plura. The only things we're really scared of here, guys. I don't think there's an alpha plura here. Everyone's just nervously watching Rampy. Take another humongous dub? Is that what we're saying? Oh, oh, look at that jump. That was just gorgeous. Throw the RG out right away. There we are. Oh, no, not the feces. Right. Some big W's have been taken so far in this stream. I have to say. With both artifacts retrieved, we were halfway to the artifacts needed, with three out of six safely in my possession. We were now closing in on day 60. And I had to get our Rex army going as to give them enough time to properly heal up. When doing these 100 days challenges, it's always important to breed your boss dinos early, as of course they won't heal in the background when you are offline, as is often the case in server arcs. So in classic rampy fashion, I proceeded to hatch our boss Rexes and level them up by slaughtering their offspring. I then grabbed some obsidian from nearby Skull Island to make some hard polymer to repair my scuba tanks, before taking a trip to the bottom of the ocean in search of the artifact of the brute, which is one reason why I wanted the Basilo so bad, as this area is actually a good place to find Tussos and Jellyfish. Two things we don't like. With the Brute Artifact retrieved and now 4 out of 6 artifacts got, I really needed to turn my eye to Dino Tributes in order to summon the final boss of this challenge. One of the tributes I was dreading farming the most was Philocalias, as I didn't particularly fancy being pounced out of a tree by one. The Redwood Biome was also the home of lots of Micro Raptors, so I didn't particularly want to go here. With a long neck in hand, I set off into the Redwoods, where I could kite any Phylos down from the trees. Once in the Redwoods, however, it seemed that the Phylos had all come off the trees anyway, so I helped myself to some Phyla Claws before heading off into the Redwood Cave to get some Megalania Toxin, as Megalania spawn all over this cave. I finished the stream with some Sauropod Vertebrae from the many Diplos that inhabit the Redwoods. I then returned to base, where I continued to both level and hatch my Rex army between the days of 61 and 70. I had calculated that 30 days would be ample time for the Rexes to heal all their way back up to full health. So while I let you guys watch this, I'm going to take a moment to plug my editor Owen, who also makes ARC videos and is almost on 1000 subscribers. It would be great if the Rampy army could go and show him some love and get him to that milestone, so I'll leave a link to his channel in the description and there may well be a card in the corner of your video right now. With the Rex army all raised and levelled, I placed them all by the lake, just outside the base and set off to do some tribute farming. I didn't get very far however when I got a bit distracted by this level 55 Deodon. 
Now, while this is a pretty poor level, I know, for some reason, pigs are a very rare spawn on the center. So I thought I would bring him back to base and tame him up to help me heal those Rexes a little bit. After bringing him back to base, I netted him first so I could trank him out of ease. And then when he was finished taming, I carried him back into my base where I killed some baby Rexes to level him up a bit. With the pig leveled, I set off to get my last two artifacts of the challenge, located in the center ice cave. Right. So we're not cold at all in here. Ah, uh, ooh. Okay, it's good. Let's see, what's the temperature in here? Minus six, that's nothing. Let's put full scuba on. Okay, full scuba. All right, who's ready? Hello there, nice to see you. How's it going? Nice to see you. First entering the water of this cave was one of my more apprehensive moments of this challenge, as you sort of assume that water in a freezing cold ice cave will be very cold indeed. But to be honest, the center ice cave isn't actually all that cold. And I even think without my otter, just a ridiculously high fortitude stat, I would have probably had no issues at all in this cave. Now the first artifact is the artifact of the devourer. And uh, after making my way to it, it didn't want to spawn at all. I even re-logged to try and get it to spawn in, which gave me and my chat a momentary heart attack, as we realized that when I logged back in, I would be without my otter on my shoulder and might freeze to death on return. Luckily, this didn't happen and I wasn't even cold. But sadly, I did have to force spawn the artifact in as there seemed no sign of it appearing whatsoever. Luckily, however, I didn't have the same issues with the artifact of the clever located on the opposite side of the ice cave. Now, Center Ice did present me with one more issue. On the clever side of the cave, there was an area known as drop down, which is, well, as you guessed, a massive drop down. The only way I would be able to get up from here was cryoing up my Procoptodon and grappling up into the unknown up top. Oh! Oh crap! Crap! Oh! I didn't. What's the spider doing there? You like Roger? Okay. Can we admire that dodge on the spider, by the way? If that spider hits that, I'm dead. That was... Oh. Oh, big place. After a quick near-death experience, we did manage to make it out of the ice cave alive, and I had now collected every single artifact needed to summon the alpha boss. At base, I quickly used the pig to heal up the rexes a little bit, and the pig's food stat was absolutely obliterated in the blink of an eye. But thank you, Deodon, for your hard services. With only 30 days left now until D-Day, I had to go into some hard tribute farming mode. So I set off with my own Basilo into the ocean to collect both Basilo Blubber and two Tentacles. Now I would need 25 of each tribute to summon the boss, which meant that I had a long task ahead of me. But luckily I was pretty familiar with farming center tributes, having spent way too much time on this map. Tuso spawns were one of the more rare ones, but luckily I would only have to kill a total of four Tusos, as each Tuso gives you eight tentacles. Basilos on the other hand only give me two, which is obviously a bit annoying, but luckily Basilos are everywhere on the center, so this tribute didn't take too long to farm at all. Following on from my ocean adventure, I returned to the Redwoods where I completed my Phyla and Megalania Toxin, as I hadn't quite grabbed enough on the last round. Back in the jungles, I collected the Sauropod Vertebrae, and then took a visit to Lava Island, where I quickly gathered all the necessary Argentovis talons. On my way back to base, I stopped by the swamp, where I could gather the remaining Sarko skins, and later that day, I found myself an Alpha Tuso, which normally drop a nice amount of tentacles. Aggro on me. Don't aggro on me. Oh no, I ate the bag. Oh no, I didn't, I didn't completely eat the body. It didn't tell me the... Why have I done that? Why have I done that? It's a bad idea. It's a bad idea. Okay, fine, 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 fine. We'll take you out first. Fine. We've not got it's any of its inventory. I swear, it was I? I wasn't overweight, was I? Well, I, I killed. I swear I wasn't. I just don't know why it's there. All right. Okay, we, we killed both of them. 
That's good. I just... No, you weren't. Slot limit? I, I don't know why on earth it would. Why for angler? Right. Hello, too, so Nice to see you. I'm just going to pop off in the middle of this ocean and grab your loot, if that's okay. Tentacles, tentacles, 24. Let's go. Back at base, I named the boss Rexes after my loyal Twitch viewers, which gives me an ideal moment to remind you all that if you would like a dino named after you during any of my videos, come on over and join the streams. Oh, no. Well, that's a yikes. Right, that's the life gone. That's the life gone. After dying to a terror bird trying to get rid of the drops in surrounding areas, I finally managed to get myself a nice green drop to come down right outside of base. Well, I was of course reminded of the unfortunate fact that you can't actually summon bosses from drops on single player, meaning I was forced to move over to Blue Obelisk, where my complacency was certainly getting the better of me. Got to make sure all these wreck. Right, that's my last life gone. It's a bit of a yikes. But after respawning and returning to the Obelisk, I at first had a mini panic attack when I realised that a fair few of the Rexes were out of the bubble. I tried to move as many into the boss fight bubble as I could, before then, just as I was about to teleport, panicking what would happen to me when I entered the fight. If I was to fall through the air to the ground, I would surely take some damage, and that would certainly be one of the worst ways to end this challenge, dying in the boss arena. Luckily for me, I landed on the back of one of my Rexes, and the final fight could commence. But before that, I just wanted to say that if you did miss any of these streams and want to watch the challenge in full, why not head over to the Rampy VOD channel, where I will upload these streams in full shortly after this video is live. Link in the description. Okay, let's go. I've not got Fred on my shoulder, but it's fine. I've not got the otter. Half of the Rexes aren't in. Nope. Uh, not great. Not great. Uh, let, let's go this way. I fancy taking on the spider first. Let's go this way. Because remember, the, the main issue in this is the Megapithecus. Not the... the yeah, me Mephopithecuses. Which, because they can throw a uh, bit at you. Which has damaged you. All right, come on, Rexus. Let's go. Otter can be on the ground. Yeah, Otter is probably on the ground, but... It's alright, Fred is safer at the start, anyway. All right, there's the Broodmother. That's good. We wanted to kill the Broodmother first. Oh my god, it's, it's a bit speedy, isn't it? So we're going to melt this thing. The Broodmother is not going to be an issue. The Broodmother will not be an issue. Uh, the Spider will be a bit more of an issue. Oh, wow. Okay. Broodmother's going down pretty fast. We'll, t we'll take that. We'll take that. All right, monkey next. All right, let's just not get hit by one of the Mesopithecuses, and we'll be laughing. He's coming for me. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. Run! My god, he... He's getting absolutely melted. What a huge W. Huge W. So, this was clearly a colossal W for the Rampy community. Beating the center with 0.1 HP and only dying a handful of times was a great achievement. However, on day 100 itself, I may have had a couple more accidents at Blue Obelisk before we started the boss. So I'll let you guys enjoy the post credit scenes if you've lasted this long, and I'll see you guys in a few weeks for another video. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. Take care, guys. Not good. I, I was a misclick. It was a misclick. I. <sighs> yes. Okay. Right. I am. Um, 
That all happened as well because I forgot the Argent. 